All right, so I want to solve this rational equation. Is this rational equation a linear equation? No. 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 It's not a linear equation because you have variables in the denominator. All right, but it is a rational equation because you have rational expressions. Now, to solve this rational equation, just like you did previously, you got to get rid of those denominators, meaning you want, you want those denominators to be what numbers instead? One. So you have to find what? The least, common the least common denominator. You can find a common denominator, but it makes it a lot easier if you use the least common denominator. All right, so let's find the least common denominator. So those are monomials. In a little while, we're going to look at, at the idea of factoring again. You spent almost all of last semester with factoring. But those are just monomials, so there's no factoring involved here. All you got to do, though, is make sure that every factor you see is part of your LCD. So I see a, my first factor, I see a 7. I have to include it. And the reason I have to include it is because is if I want to make this a 1, then I've got to multiply it by a what? 7. So it can reduce. So I need a 7. If I want to make this x a 1, then i got to multiply it also by what? x. So I need 7x as part of my LCD. All right, now with 3. If I want to make this a 1, then I've got to multiply the numerator by what? 3. So I need a what here? A 3. This is a 3. I already have it. This is an x. I already have it. So what's the LCD? 21x. Now, the next thing you got to look at is your restrictions. So remember, you can never divide by what number? Zero. Zero. Now, those are monomials. Those are monomials. So if they're just monomials, it's very easy to determine what, what x cannot be. Seven times what is zero? Zero. So x cannot be what? Zero. zero. Will this ever be zero? No. Will this ever be zero? Will this ever be zero? Yes, when x is what? Zero. So there's only how many restrictions here? One. Just one. All right. Now, in a little while, we're going to talk about the word extraneous root in a little while. But we're not going to talk about it just yet. All right. Once I find the LCD and once I find the restriction, then what's the next step? Multiply both sides by the LCD. Now, here's how you got to write this. Remember, show the work as presented in class. You're going to put both of these in parentheses because there's more than one fraction in both cases. So you're going to do this. Negative 6 divided by 7x plus 2 thirds in parentheses equal 1 third minus 1 over x. Just like that. So all I did was just rewrite the equation. All I did was rewrite the equation, just put them in parentheses. Now what's the next step? i got to multiply both sides by what? Which is 21x. All right, so that's your next step. Now, what's going to be the next step you're going to do? Not reduce. You don't reduce first, because here's what's going to happen. If you reduce first, you're going to say 7 into 21 is what? 3, and then distribute the 3. You're not distributing a 3. You have to distribute a what? 21x. Because 3 is not being multiplied by 2 thirds. What's being multiplied by 2 thirds? 21x. So you don't reduce at this point, you distribute at this point. All right. So just think about what we did yesterday. You said 21x times what? Negative 6 of 7x plus 21x times what? 2 thirds. That's where I'm at. Do the same thing on the other side. You can say 21x times what? One third. Minus 21x times what? One over x. So that's where I'm at. So I use a distributive property. So that was my step. To go from here to here, I use a distributive property. Now what do I do? Reduce, simplify. All right. So 7 into 7 is 1. 721 is 
3. x into x is 1. x into x is 1. So remember the whole idea of multiplying by the LCD, so you make those denominators 1s. Now let's do the next one. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 21 is 7. Let's do the next one. 3 to 3 is 1. 3 to 21 is 7. The next one. X and X is 1. X and X is 1. So at this point, all I did was reduce. That's what I just did. All right, now let's rewrite all of this. 3 times 1 times a negative 6 is what? Negative 18. Plus 7 times x times 2 is 14x. Equal 7 times x times 1 is 7x. Minus 21 times 1 times 1 is 21. So that's where I'm at. So I went from a rational equation that had variables in the denominator to a simple linear equation. Now notice though, all those equations are equivalent. So remember equivalent equations have the same what? Solution. All right. Now, remember, when solving a linear equation, you're going to bring all the variables to one side, constant to the other. So tell me what you want to do first. Add 18 to both sides. Add 18 to both sides, okay. And then combine like terms. Now, remember, when I add 18 to both sides or when I add something to both sides, what property am I using from last semester and semester before? What's that property called? The addition property of equality. I gotta remember some stuff from last semester and the semester before. Division property of equality. Now you can combine like terms. What's left on the left? 14x. Equal 7x, and then what's the negative 21 and a positive 18? Negative 3. One more, actually, two more steps and you're done. Now we're gonna bring the variables to the left hand side. Subtract 7x. Subtract 7x. So it's 14x minus 7x. Equal? One more step and you're done. What's my solution? So x equal? Negative 3 sevenths. So negative 3 sevenths is a solution to this equation, 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 and so on. Now, remember, you did have a restriction, though, right? You had a restriction, correct? Okay. Is, is this, is this uh, potential solution your restriction? No. So then you're good. You're going to say that's your solution. All right. Now, let's look at this one now. So this is going to be a new. All right, this is number two. Two a divided by a plus two minus five equal seven a divided by a plus two. So two a divided by a plus two minus five equals seven a divided by a plus two. All right. Now notice this time. Well, first of all, let me ask you this question: Is is this uh, a linear equation? No, but it is what? Rational. It is rational. In the previous problems where you had variables and denominators, those are all monomials. Or is this a monomial right here? No, that's a what? Binomial. Now you got to start thinking about last semester. Factoring. Can I factor A plus 2? No. All right, so A plus 2, you cannot factor. All right, so now let's talk about your restriction. Now, 
What makes this denominator zero? When A is negative 2. Now, if you can't do that in your head, think about what's happening. You're asking yourself, i got to figure out what makes this denominator zero. Some of you can look at this right away and, and tell me it's negative 2. Others of you may not. So basically what you're going to do then is you're going to say this. You're going, to, you're going to set the denominator equal to what number? Zero. And you just solve for A. How do you get A by itself? Subtract. Subtract 2 from both sides. And so what's A? Negative 2. So negative 2 makes my denominator what? Zero. So, so far you're going to say A cannot equal what? Zero. Negative 2. This fraction right here, this rational expression, what is that denominator? One. One. All right, so it's never going to be zero. When will this be zero? Two. When A is negative two, we already figured it out. It's the same as this one. Some of the restrictions are there. One. Just one. It's just one. All right, so finding restrictions is not that difficult. You just find out what makes my denominator zero. Now let's talk about the LCD now. Okay, so you have to remember some things from last semester. You had a, a lot of practice with this idea last semester. Every factor must be part of the LCD. So let's think about what we did a while ago. We said that if I want this right here to be a 1, meaning that I want to get rid of this 7, make it a 1, then I've got to multiply by what? 7. Make this x a 1, I've got to multiply by what? x. So that's how you start thinking about your LCD. Okay. Your factor here is 8 plus 2. So if I want to make this whole thing a 1, i got to multiply by what? 8 plus 2. So 8 plus 2 has to be part of the LCD. My next denominator is a 1. Well, 1 goes into everything. My next denominator is 8 plus 2. I already have it. So what's your LCD? 8 plus 2. That's your LCD. Now once you find your LCD, what's the next step? Multiply both sides by the LCD. Okay, now let's think about those parentheses that we added. Am I going to use parentheses on both sides? No, just on the left because how many fractions do you see? How many rational expressions do you see? Two. Two. All right. So you're going to see, I'm going to put I'm going to rewrite the left hand side just like this. Put in parentheses. I'm going to rewrite the right-hand side. I am not going to put that one in parentheses because it's just one, one fraction. But now what's the next step? Multiply both sides by, Multiply both two. Sides by the LCD. So you're going to say A plus 2 times A plus 2, just like this. That's where we're at. Now think about the, the problem we did a while ago and the problems we did yesterday. What's the next step at this point? Side, distributed. distributed property, get rid of the parentheses. All right, now listen carefully. So you're going to say A plus 2 times what? 2A over what? A plus 2. Now be careful with the next one. You're going to say minus 5 times what? A plus 2. Now, if you're not careful, and we kind of discussed that idea before, if you're not careful, you're going to do this. This is incorrect. You're going to do this, and you're going to say that's, that's minus 5A plus 2, and it's not. Because A and the 2 has to be multiplied by what? 5. So you need to put that in parentheses. Put that in parentheses. So A plus 2 is being multiplied by that negative 5. And all I'm going to do is just rewrite this over right here. All right, so just rewrite that over. All right, so all I did at this point was the distributive property. That's all I did, the distributive property. I used the distributive property. So if you go back and look at all the problems we've done with these rational equations, you'll notice the distributive property was that was the... One of the things we did, and then the next thing we did was reduce. The next thing we did was reduce. Meaning this. A plus 2 divided by itself is what? 1. one. A plus 2? One. 1. So 1 times
times 2a is what? 2a. Now over here, what is I'm going to have to do here at this point? Distribute. So I get 2a what? Minus 5a minus 10. So it's not going to be minus 5a plus 2. It will be minus 5a minus 10. So that's why you have to put that in parentheses. Let's go ahead and reduce on this side first. That's going to be a 1 and that's going to be a what? 1 and what's left? 7, 8. All right, so that's where I'm at. So notice I went from a rational equation to a what? Linear. All right, what's the next step? All right. 2a minus 5a? Negative 3a minus 10 equal 7a. What's the next step? All right, add 3a to both sides. And combine like terms, I get a negative 10 equals what? 10a divided by 10. So I get a equals a negative 1. Now, remember, you had a restriction, right? Is negative 1 a restriction? No. no. So this, they use the word potential. When, whenever you have restrictions, whenever you have restrictions, for right now, this is called a potential solution. Potential. Is this potential solution actually a solution? Yes. Yes, because it's not the restriction. Right, so there's your solution. So quite a bit of steps here. So just, just kind of when you're doing the problems, use, use this as a guide as you go through these. All right, number three. Okay, number three. Suppose you had this. One divided by t plus three plus 2 divided by t equals 9 divided by t plus 3. So 1 divided by t plus 3 plus 2 divided by t equals 9 divided by t plus 3. All right. So is this a linear equation? No, but it is what? Rational. So some denominators are monomial, some are not. So if you look at a first denominator, t plus 3, now at some point you're going to have to factor, but can I factor t plus 3? No. t plus 3 is just t plus 3. The second denominator, that's a numerator, right? I'm, I'm sorry, that's a monomial, so I'm going to leave it alone. The third denominator, t plus 3, can you factor that? All right, now let's talk about restrictions. Nope. She said we just have one. Nope. We have two of them. Negative three and zero. So if, what makes this, this t plus three zero when t is negative three? When is this denominator right here zero? When t is zero. When is this denominator right here zero? When t is what? Which we already have. So how many restrictions are there? Two. So there are two restrictions. Now let's talk about the LCD. Every factor has to be part of the LCD. So in other words, if I want this factor right here to be a 1, then I've got to multiply by what? t plus 3. So I've got to use t plus 3 as a factor. Okay? If I want this to be a 1 right here, then I also have to multiply by what? t. Okay, now be careful. Your, your, your LCD is, is the product, LCD is the product of factors. So T plus G is a factor. That has to be multiplied, no parentheses. That has to be multiplied by the monomial factor, which is what? T. Okay, let's talk about the next one. If I want this to be a 1, I've also got to multiply by what? t plus 3, which I already have. So your LCD is the product of what two factors? T and t plus 3. 
All right, so that's your LCD, T times T plus 3. Now leave it like this. Don't distribute. Don't distribute this. Don't say that's T squared plus 3T. It is, but you don't want to write it as T squared, squared plus 3T because you want to reduce at some point. So leave it in factored form. Leave this in factored form. All right, once you find your LCD, what's the next step? Multiply both sides by the LCD. So 1 divided by t plus 3 plus 2 divided by t. All that's being multiplied by the LCD. What's the LCD? T times t plus 3. Yep, just like this. Equal. 9 divided by t plus 3. That also has to be multiplied by what? Yeah, just like that. All right, so that's where I'm at. Now let's think about the previous problems. At this point, that's where you can use the distributor property. See this, this big parentheses right here? So I'm going to distribute the LCD. I'm going to distribute the LCD. So you're going to say this now. You're going to say the LCD, which is what? That has to be multiplied by the first fraction. What's my first fraction? T plus 3. Plus... The LCD, and what's the LCD? Times the second fraction, which is what? 2 over T. I'm just going to rewrite this whole part right here. So all I did, all I did was this, at this point, was use the distributive property. So all I did, to go from here to here, distributive property. So all I did. Now remember what we did after that was reduce. That's what we did next. Okay, so let's reduce. The T plus 3's divide out. Y'all see that? I have 1's here. The T's divide out here. See that? The T plus 3's divide out here. So remember, the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to make those denominators 1's. Now let's look at what we have now. T times 1 times 1 is what? T plus... 1 times t plus 3 in parentheses times 2 is 2 times t plus 3, just like this, okay? Let's see how I wrote it. All right. Equal t times 1 times 9 is what? 9t. So that's where I'm at. So do one thing at a time. Don't do too much. You're going to mess up if you do too much. So notice I went from a rational equation to what kind of equation? Linear. I got distributed again here. So I get t plus what? Plus 6 equal 9t. All right. What's the next step? Combine like terms. So I get um, 3t plus 6 equal... 19. Next step. Subtract 3t from both sides. Combine like terms. I get 6 equal 60. 6. Then you get t by itself. I got to divide both sides by what? 6. So, so what is a potential solution? 1. Is that a restriction? So that means one is going to be a what? Solution. So t equal one. Let's do another one. The more you do with this, the better you get at it. Now, they usually, guys, on the final, they usually have a problem that's rational, just like these. All right, number four. Five divided by 3x minus 3. 3x minus 3. Minus 2 thirds equals negative 1 divided by x minus 3. So that's where I'm at. So there's your equation. Okay. Now, 
Look at that first denominator. Remember, the whole point is to find the LCD. Remember, the least common denominator. So the least common denominator is composed of a product of factors. So you've got to make sure that your denominators are factored. From last semester, can I factor 3x minus 3? Yes. yes. How can I factor 3x minus 3? Factor of 3. Very good. So this right here is actually 3 times what? X minus 1. All right. And I'm going to have to ask you to rewrite something because uh, the way I have it written, the way I have it written is going to be a quadratic, and we don't do a quadratic with this one. So I need you to rewrite this one as, as 1 right here. Make that a 1. What was that? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that's, that's, well, when you get a degree in math, you'll be able to do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So make that a one. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, it was going to end up being quadratic and not linear. All right. Now, let's talk about the restrictions. Okay, to find the restriction, you got to look at every factor. Okay, let me see the word factor. So, hold on. You see this denominator right here? It's made up of two factors. Remember, factors are, are uh, products. What's that first factor you see? Three. Three. Is that ever going to be zero? No. no. What's the second factor you see? X is that going to be zero at some point? Yeah. When x is what? Positive one. Positive one. So x cannot equal what? Positive one. All right. Let's look at the next factor. Three. Is that ever going to be zero? No. no. Let's go to the next factor, x minus one. When will that be zero? Which I already have. So how many restrictions does this problem have? One. Just one. Okay. Now, let's talk about the LCD. Remember a while ago we said the LCD has to include every factor you see. And it makes sense because if I want this 3 right here to be a 1, that means i got to multiply by what? 3. So I need, what is my factor? 3. I need... 3 is one of my factors. My next factor is x minus 1. So if I want this to be a 1, I have to multiply, multiply by what? x minus 1 in parentheses. My next factor is a 3. If I want this to be 1, I've got to multiply by what? 3, three which I already have. My next factor is x minus 1. If I want that to be 1, I've got to multiply by what? x minus 1, which I already have. So what's the LCD? 3 times x minus 1. Now don't distribute. Leave it in factored form. Leave it as 3 times x minus 1. All right, so you found your restrictions. You found your LCD. Now what's the next step? Multiply both sides by the LCD. All right, so now when I rewrite this, listen carefully. See, uh, when I rewrite this, and I had 5 divided by 3x minus 3. Rewrite this so it's 5 divided by the factored part instead. And you're going to see why, because you're going to, this, this is going to divide with this. All right. So in other words, in other words, rewrite the first fraction as 5 divided by 3 times what? x minus 1 instead. Minus 2 thirds. And all that's being multiplied by the LCD. What's the LCD? 3 times x minus 1. Notice I enclose parentheses. Equal the LCD times that fraction. Alright, so that's where I'm at. So all I did was I just multiplied both sides by the LCD. Now, i got to get rid of that, that larger parentheses. 
So how will I do that? Distributed. Distributed property. So I'm going to take this LCD and I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to say the LCD times the first fraction. What's my first fraction? Okay. Minus the LCD times the second fraction, which is what? Two-thirds. Equals, I'm just going to rewrite this over. Notice I'm not doing too much at once. If you do too much at once, you're going to mess up. Your, your thought processes are going to go in disarray. All right. So all I did at this point was the distributive property. Now what's the next thing I do? Reduce. No, so remember, the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to, is to get these denominators to be a 1. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 3 is 1. So remember, anything divided by itself is 1. x minus 1 is 1. x minus 1, 2 x minus 1 is 1. Let's go to the next one. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 3 is 1. Let's go to the next one. x minus 1 is 1. x minus 1 to x minus 1 is 1. So that's why a while ago, remember I said leave it in factor form. Don't leave it, don't write it as 3x minus 3. Leave it as in factor form so that way you can factor out the factors. All right, now let's see what we have. 1 times 1 times 5 is 5. All right, now be careful with this one. Minus 1 times x minus 1 times 2 is this, right? Minus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, leave, leave it in parentheses for right now. Equal 3 times 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. So that's where I'm at. So notice I went from a rational equation to what kind of equation? Linear. Now what's the next step? Distribute the negative 2. Now you're not going to say 5 minus 2 is 3, right? Okay, because remember, order of operation, you multiply before you subtract. So 5, subtract 2x, and then what? Plus 2 equal a negative 3. Combine like terms, you get 7 minus 2x equals negative 3. What's the next step? Okay. Combine like terms, I get a negative 2x equal a negative 10. What's the next step? Divide both sides by negative 2. I get x to be what? 5. So this potential solution, is it a solution or not? It is because my restriction was what? 1. So we haven't yet talked about the idea of the extraneous root yet. Because, because my solutions were, were not the restrictions. Okay? All right. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, let's suppose we had this. X divided by 6x minus 36 minus 9 equal 1 divided by x minus 6. x divided by 6x minus 36 minus 9 equal 1 over x minus 6. Before you find your restrictions, what are you supposed to do? Factor the denominators. So that first denominator, how can I factor 6x minus 36? Factor out of 6. So in other words, I can rewrite this denominator as 6 times what? x minus 6. The second rational expression, that minus 9, that's just a 1 down there. The next rational expression, the denominator is x minus 6. Can I factor that? No. All right. Now we can talk about the LCD. What do you think the LCD is? 6 times 
x minus 6. Very good. 6 times x minus 6. So remember, every factor has to be part of the LCD. What's the restriction? So let's talk about the restriction now. What do you think it is, just, just out of curiosity? X and I be what? Six. So if you look at your factors, my first factor is a six, right? Is that ever going to be zero? No. no. My next factor is x minus six. Is that going to be zero? When x is what? Positive six. The next one's a one. The next one's x minus six. When would that be zero? Positive six. So there's how many restrictions? Just one. All right. Okay, so once you find your LCD, once you find your restriction, what's the next step? Multiply both sides by the LCD, which is 6 times x minus 6. All right, now remember though, uh, remember we factored this, right? Okay, so rewrite this as x divided by 6 times x minus 6. That's 9. And all this side, notice I'm putting that in parentheses because there's, there's more than one rational expression here. All that has to be multiplied by the LCD. And what's the LCD? Okay. Equal. And then on the other side also, what you do to one side, you do the other. So 6 times x minus 6 times the right-hand side. All right, so the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to make those denominators 1. So you want to clear your fraction. Okay, once, once I get to this point, remember I had to enclose the uh, left-hand side in parentheses. Now what are you going to do? Distribute. So this LCD, you're going to distribute. So you're going to say the LCD times the first fraction. What's my first fraction? X divided by 6 times X minus 6 minus the LCD times the second fraction, which is just 9. Equal, I'm just going to rewrite the other side. All right, so that's where I'm at. Now the next step is to reduce. The 6's divide out. The x minus 6's divide out. And on the other side, the right-hand side, the x minus 6 is divide out. All right. So I have 1 times 1 times x, which is what? X. x. All right. Now listen carefully what I'm about to do. I have a negative 6 times x minus 6 times a positive 9 is a what? Negative 54, negative 54 times what? X minus 6. 6 times 9 is 54, right? Okay, so write it like that. Equal, and what is that equal to on the other side? 6, very good. 6 times 1 times 1 is 6. All right, you have to use your calculator with the next part. What's the next step? Distribute. So I get x minus 54x. Now, what's that on your calculator? What's the negative 54 times a negative 6? Three what? Twenty-four equals six. What's the next step? So x minus fifty-four x is a negative fifty-three x plus three twenty-four equals six. What's the next step? Subtract three twenty-four. Combine like terms. So I got negative fifty-three x equals a what? Negative 318. Okay. Divide both sides by negative 53, right? Use your calculator. Positive 6. So x equals 6. All right, very good. So 6 is a potential solution, but that potential solution cannot work. Because if, if you say it's a solution and you check, if you say 6 is a solution and you check, what happens in the denominator? I get 0. That can't happen. So 
so your solution, your potential solution happens to be your restriction. So in the blank, you can notice in the worksheet, it'll say solution, something like this. And it'll say x equal blank. You, so so since, since this was a restriction, and that was the only one that you had, there is no solution. So you're going to say no solution. Now, on my math lab, they're going to use a symbol for no solution. You may remember the symbol, the empty set. That's the empty set. So on my math lab, when you do that one, and it's no solution, it's, it's, you're going to see it's going to, it's going to, uh, uh, it's going to be that symbol for the empty set. That's where you get a key. Okay, now let's talk about the extraneous root now. Okay, so remember in earlier yesterday when we started talking about solving those equations, we said that all those equations were equivalent, meaning that equivalent equations have the what? Same solution. So you got x to be 6. So you might say, well, well, that has to be a solution. It is a solution. It's a solution to these linear equations x equals 6. If I plug in 6 here, let's look very carefully. If I plug in 6, what's 6 minus 6? 0. What's 0 times a negative 54? 0. And x is what? Ah, 6. So what's 6 minus 0? And is 6 equal to 6? Yes. So it is a solution. It's a solution to, to these equations, but is it a solution to the original no, it's not a solution to the original because I cannot divide by what? Zero. So what you've done was you've introduced what's called an extraneous root. Root is the same thing as solution. Extraneous, E-X-T-R-A-N-E-O-U-S. Think of the word false. It's a false solution. So it means that, that what you found is a solution to one of your equations, but it's not a solution to the what? Original. Original. That's what that means. So when we did the other problem, for those extraneous roots? No. Because they were actually solutions. This is the first situation where you got what kind of solution? Extraneous. Okay, so you understand that that is a solution to these, but it's not a solution to the original because you're dividing by what? Zero. Okay? So that's the idea of the extraneous root. All right, any questions at this point? So it's quite a bit of work that we've done in those five problems. All right, now, let's see. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. 